Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Exchange. My name is Scott Morganroth, along with Louis Eddie Weiss, my new co-host, and we are broadcasting on the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network. So, Ryan, well, welcome back. Uh, we have a lot of work to do tonight, and love it when you come on the program because a lot of the people that we talk with, uh, I don't know if they're spending money gambling or whatever the case is, but they can use your information. So. Why don't we go ahead and lead off with you, and uh, let's go from there. All right, Ryan? Sounds good to me. Uh, the first thing that I had uh, that I have on my, my list of, of priorities for tonight is the fact that uh, Tyree Hill has already started limited uh, practices. Um, Damian Williams and LaShawn McCoy are both full participants in practice. And, and after, after last week, with, they, were, they were pretty limited in terms of who was available to play against the Lions. The Chiefs just getting back Damian Williams and having a punch with LaShawn McCoy in the backfield. And even the threat of McCoy possibly even being on the field right there alone creates so many problems for any defense that they're going to play against that uh, uh, – you should be able to have no fear that Patrick Mahomes and company are going to put up their fair share of fantasy points. Yeah, well, LaShawn McCoy, I'll tell you what, this guy here, the more that he adopts to Andy Reid's system, I believe he's going to be uh, one heck of a play as uh, the season progresses. Don't you, yeah, don't... he's, a, he's definitely been, uh, been a, a bit of a surprise. I think that really... Um, with LaShawn McCoy, he's getting to the point now where it's, it's all about, you know, can he stay healthy? Um, because I think that he still has the ability to be a contributor. It's just a matter of fact, it's a matter of, you know, how healthy can he stay um, and stay on the field? Yeah, that, that's, I guess, durability um, has always been somewhat of an issue with him. I mean, we know how well he did. With Philadelphia, and I think Buffalo, he was a little bit uh, hampered by the injury bug as well. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, good Buffalo, seasons. Buffalo, he struggled a lot with with being injured. He missed multiple games. Uh, he missed multiple games in a row each season. So um, this is definitely, hopefully, going to be a a much better situation for him because they have Damian Williams. I really, when he was in Buffalo, it was him. That was it. Right. I mean, you, you know, you can't tell me that they were, you know, he was splitting carries with Chris Ivory or, or anyone else because really, LaShawn McCoy was the talent and everyone else is just kind of taking some carries here and there. Now when you've got a split up like LaShawn McCoy with Damian Williams, while there are many that would, you know, argue that Damian Williams is not the talent level of LaShawn McCoy, and I would agree, um, the way that both of them fit into this system allows both of them to be productive, both of them to, to get breaks when they need it, plus they also have other guys like Daryl Williams back there who can uh, who can you know wreak havoc in, as a running back as well. Yeah, well, you made a good point there, Ryan. Anytime you got two horses dividing the carries, it certainly makes things a whole lot easier, and therefore his workload has definitely decreased a little bit. So let's go back to Tyreek Hill for a minute. You say when he's uh, still limited in practice, why don't you go ahead and describe some of the challenges that Tyreek is facing at the moment? Well, with, with his injury, um, it was a, I can't remember this, I mean, it, what it was, the type of injury, I can't remember the specific name of it, but it's basically where um, the collarbone, where it meets the sternum, your, 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 your breastbone, um, basically that there's a little joint there that that, that became dislocated. So it wasn't that he was he wasn't facing like a like a broken bone or anything like uh, like Nick Foles. It was simply the, the the two the two bones came out of alignment. So with him, it's a matter of you know are they back you know how well they got back into alignment, how well is he able to run, and you know can he take a hit without feeling you know just a a, a jarring pain throughout his shoulder and chest. If he's able to get to that point, um, you know, that's that's really what it comes down to. So with his speed, he doesn't take a whole lot of really solid shots. He really, for the most part, gets taken down uh, taken down by the by the legs. Um, 
you know, guys trying to swipe at him just to just to try to knock him off balance because they can't keep, can't catch up with him if he gets by. Okay, all right, let's go on to Stefan Diggs. You say he's not sure if he's going to play on Sunday? What's wrong with this guy? Well, here's here's what's going on with Stefan Diggs. Now, we talked a little bit about this last night. Right. Um, that Stefan Diggs it has complained about um, about the workload that he has gotten. And, and even Adam Thielen made some complaints in the, in the, in the media about, uh, about the, the play calling, about Kirk Cousins. Um, but the, as far as Diggs goes, he was not at practice yesterday. It was for an undisclosed reason. So no one knows exactly what was going on. There was rumors flying around that he may be getting traded or that he's at least wanted to be traded. And then today in the media, um, someone asked, someone asked him, you know, did you request, did you request a trade? And the quote from Stefan Diggs was, um, there's a little truth behind every rumor. And so you have to wonder, okay, did he ask for a trade? Um, and it, it, to me, it looks like, you know, that's what he, that's what has happened. And so, um, it was actually, I believe, uh, the head coach who said, um, we don't know, or if someone asked if he's, if Dix is going to play on Sunday, and he said, as of this point, we don't know for sure. Well, you know, so, all these guys that continue to demand trades, geez, they're getting paid a lot of money. They, they really are, and I think that's the one thing that ultimately will go ahead and uh, turn a lead. I don't know if anything will be turned off totally from the NFL, you follow me? But it's starting yeah. to become a bit of an issue, you know what I mean, in terms of people uh, talking about what's going down, you know what I'm saying? And I just think that they just got to go ahead and uh, back up their play and quit worrying about all that, you know what I mean? I, I think it's uh, there's too many uh, too much drama and theatrics, and I think it does get old after a while, don't you think? Yeah, I think that I think that that's definitely a factor in terms of Stefan Diggs. I I mean I can see the frustration last year, even though even with Adam Thielen getting off to the hot start that he did in the beginning of the year, um, the first you know the first eight games with a hundred yards, um, you know scoring a whole bunch of touchdowns. By the end of the season in fantasy, Stefan Diggs actually outscored him. Um, and so Stefan Diggs has basically been the number one guy in that offense in terms of the receiving for the last couple of years. And now they're not even throwing his direction. Now he did have his best game of the season last year, the, this past week. I want to say it was like seven catches for around a hundred, 110 yards, somewhere in there. I think it was seven for one Oh eight. Um, that being said, you know, it's, it's still a very, cruddy situation if you're a wide receiver in Minnesota because they spend most of their time running the ball and then Kirk Cousins in games in team games against uh, winning teams he folds like origami paper okay that's interesting okay so let's go on to Juju Smith Schuster uh, Vance McDonald and James Conner you say they did not practice as a as any cause of concern for uh, those respective ball clubs Yes, it is. Um, and here's the deal. Uh, I had, you know, a lot of people had, um, we had mentioned last night about the fact that uh, the Baltimore Ravens defense was really shaky. A lot of te- a lot of people in fantasy football had dropped them. They'd really been underperforming. Um, and if, in fact, none of those guys play, um, that really boosts the uh, the Baltimore defense as an option again for fantasy football this Sunday. Um, in terms of the passing game, if Juju doesn't play, they, honestly, Juju has not been doing all that much this season with uh, without Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, his last game he had three catches for 15 yards. Uh, most of the big plays were going to Deontay Johnson. Um, and, and even to even some place to Nick Bennett. And then, for the most part, Rudolph, in terms of you know, the way he's been playing so far in Pittsburgh, and it's a, a lot of dump-offs to the running backs. Now, so, so that kind of takes Juju out of play. Um, however, for the running backs, if James Conner can't play, um, you need to go out and get 
Jalen Samuels off of waivers uh, if he's available um, because, again, because Rudolph does a lot of dump-offs to the running back, um, I believe, in my opinion, Samuels is the better receiving running back than um, than James Conner. Can he can provide some solid uh, some solid running ability between the tackles? And if he is if he is starting, I think that he could possibly put up top ten to top fifteen running back numbers against this Baltimore defense. Okay. Uh, you also indicated that Melvin Gordon definitely is part of the game plan for Sunday. That is actually the, that's that is from the brass in um, in San Diego or sorry not San, San Diego. Diego we all make, make that mistake. <laughs> uh, in LA at Chargers headquarters, that's actually from Coach Lynn has said that Melvin Gordon is definitely part of the game plan on Sunday. Um, in terms of fantasy use, I currently right now have him as. You know, a low end uh, running back too, just because we don't know how they're going to use him. It's big mystery. So it's if you have him and you don't have any other options, yes, go ahead and start him. If you have some solid options to use at running back, and Melvin Gordon is just a guy that you kind of stashed just in case to see what would happen. Um, if that's the case, I would hold off on playing him for at least a week to see how they want to use him this week. And kind of where where everything goes from there. Now you brought up an interesting point. Maybe you know the answer to this. Are the Chargers headquarters still in San Diego? That I don't know. I had to ask. Now that you brought up the San Diego <laughs> thing, all right. I got a few notes here that I want to ask, and then Lewis is going to get involved. Okay. Not a problem. All right. First of all, okay. According to Pat Shermer, it looks like a week week five return for Saquon Barkley. Some out, some, some thoughts about that. Yeah, I'm. I'm honestly surprised, and, and, you know, again, we talked about this last night, right. and the fact that he has come back this early from what has been deemed a high ankle sprain, right. um, you know, suggests one of, at least one of three things. One, that he is a freak of nature and can heal really fast. Two, that he has a phenomenal work ethic and can, and, and has the ability to, to work his way and strengthen his body to get it to where it needs to be. Which, if you saw any of his workout videos, uh, you know, before he got drafted, that's kind of obvious. Um, and then three is the fact that he can probably deal with a ton of pain. So honestly, we talked, you know, talked about this last night. We figured it's probably a combination of all three. That he's probably just one of those bodies that can heal really fast. He can deal with pain, and you know that you know you, it's documented what a hard worker he is and how yeah. hard he puts. You know how much he puts his body through to get it ready for the season. So, um, I think honestly, I think it's a little early for me to be too excited about putting him in there. But once he, you know, I think if he shows pretty well in week five, you know, he should be in great shape for week six. You know, fire him up, Daniel Jones. Um, I think is only going to get even better. Um, not just not only as a real quarterback, but as a fantasy quarterback, putting up fantasy points with Saquon Barkley there. I'm actually amazed that we're even having this discussion that Barkley uh, is actually ready to play considering what we saw just a few weeks ago. To even have this discussion blows me away. Well, there was there were talks that, you know, with, with, with when he got injured, I want to say their, their uh, bye week is week 10 for the Giants, and he got injured in week 2. So they figured it may be six to eight weeks, and depending on where they were at, they wouldn't put him on IR, but would simply hold off until, um, you know, hold it out until week 10 through the bye week and start him up in week 11. And the fact that he's coming back possibly in week five is absolutely remarkable. Yeah, it is. All right, two more things uh, that I want to talk about. Mike Nugent wins the Patriots kicking job. Um, Nugent is a salt. I think that... If you're in in desperate need for a kicker, I think that Nugent is is going to be a solid addition. Um, last year with the Raiders, I want to say he was I want to say four for four on field goals and like four of five on extra points. It's somewhere in that you know four for four, five for five, somewhere in that uh, that area. So he is a solid kicker. Um, you know, has he has a history of being pretty good? Even when I want to say he was previously with the with the Bengals. 